Zion Williamson played his best game ever in the NBA. He broke out the mid-range jumper, had five blocks, and the Pelicans now are right back in the hunt for the sixth seed after beating the Phoenix Suns. But it wasn't all Zion. I'll tell you how the Pelicans got their biggest win of the season with some really good coaching adjustments in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Let's go. You are Locked On Pelicans, your daily New Orleans Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to another edition of Locked On Pelicans, the daily podcast covering your favorite team, the New Orleans Pelicans and NBA, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, available wherever you get your podcast and available on YouTube. I'm your host, Pelicans Insider, credential member of the media, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and I am here with y'all after the Pelicans beat the Phoenix Suns, a massive must-needed win for this team, 113-105, that puts them right back in the hunt to get out of the play-in tournament and for the sixth seed or even fifth seed potentially as well so we're going to break down Zion's best ever game in the NBA I don't think that's a stretch to say at all he looked incredible in this one he did some things you might not even realize but there were also some really good coaching adjustments a good performance from CJ McCollum I want to break all of that down in today's episode of Locked on Pelicans today's episode of Locked on Pelicans is also brought to you by by prize picks the best and easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash locked on NBA and use all lowercase locked on NBA for a first deposit match up to $100. And of course, thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Join almost 10,000 Pelicans fans on YouTube as well. If you want to meet me in person, ask me questions get set for the postseason. I've got a live event that I'm going to tell you about at the end of this segment, so stay tuned for that as well. I'm really excited about this, so please stay tuned for that. But let's start with Zion Williamson, who was utterly dominant against the Phoenix Suns here. We can read the stat line, and that alone just looks impressive. 29 points, 10 rebounds, 7 assists, 1 steal, 5 Five blocks. His previous career high was three. More on that in a moment here. Seven of eight from the line. 11 for 21 from the field. He was just flat out dominant in this game, including really good defense as well. I don't think we've seen a better performance from him in the NBA at all. And this guy delivered in a game that was a must win for New Orleans, particularly after that loss to the San Antonio Spurs. And CJ McCollum said after this game that this was, in fact, a must win for him to play through injury. The, the finger contusion that he has go out and lead this team to a win in the way that he did on both ends of the court is nothing short of incredibly impressive. Should be really proud that this guy just went out there and took it to a very good Phoenix Suns team that has been peaking at the right time. They knew they needed to get this win and Zion did everything he could. There was a lot that helped him along the way too. There were some really good coaching adjustments. This, uh, the court was spaced well because of things like that. And we'll get into those more in the next segment here. But looking at Zion, a performance like this is why I said that even if this season was going to be a disappointment, and I think it is, it wasn't over yet because you have Zion Williamson coming back. You're going to have Brandon Ingram back in the next couple of games. And this team could hit their stride again at the right time. But Zion Williamson looked like he should be on an all-NBA team here. And this is the type of performance in a game that people were watching that makes people go, oh, whoa, right? It's not just the scoring. Almost 30 points near perfect from the free throw line. The rebounding, which hasn't always been there for him, but he's been more aggressive and stronger at getting to. It was like the defense, the five. Let's go with the defense, right? The individual defense he played in this game was good. He was switched on to Bradley Beal at times, slowed him down. Switched on to Devin Booker at times, slowed him down. Had Kevin Durant at times and slowed him down. Particularly late in the game when he slowed down Bradley Beal, trying to drive on him. You saw Bradley Beal like jab-stepping, jab-stepping, trying to see where there was an opening and there wasn't one. And it allowed Herb Jones to come over and basically rip the ball out of Beal's hands. Herb Jones gets that steal. But it was because of Zion Williamson slowing him down and not allowing Bradley Beal to get by him that that sort of thing happened. So this was an incredibly impressive defensive performance from him. And that's not even touching on the blocks, right? Five blocks. His previous career high was three, including 
a chase down block that was incredible on Kevin Durant where he just swatted that thing about as hard as you could. And all of those blocks going back to the New Orleans Pelicans. So it wasn't like you swat them out of bounds and then the Phoenix Suns just inbounded again. It was, it, let me get the ball to my team and now we're on a fast break and we can go out and we can score easier. That's the type of defense that really makes me pay attention to a player. Anthony Davis was good about that. Hassan Whiteside was not. And that's why I always thought there were some empty stats there with him. But the type of defense that Zion gave you here was nothing short of really, really impressive. And his candidacy for all NBA is only going to go up with a five block game where people have to pay attention to the fact that he is good on that side of the ball right now and isn't a liability. And then there's the offense. We know what he's capable of doing. You know, one thing that, that I've long thought about Zion is, is he finishes around the rim like a guard. The English, the touch that he has on the ball when scoring has always been impressive. There have been a couple of games this season where that hasn't really been there. And he's taken a lot of really good shots at the rim that just kind of like spun in and out or just didn't fall. And it was killer. Not in this game. Those shots were falling. His touch around the rim was great. But they knew what Phoenix was going to do defensively. They were going to wall off Zion. We just saw this in New Orleans the other night when they, you know, ran away with it. And that was where they just parked Yusuf Nurkic in the lane, let him sink back in drop coverage. That's where on a pick and roll, the big man's just going to drop backwards to kind of contain a drive, giving an open three-point shot up, something like that. So he did that when Zion had the ball to just try and kind of contain him and slow him down and not let him get to the rim. And Zion said, okay, I know what you're doing. I'm going to reach into my bag and pull out something we haven't seen him do in the game. He had a couple like short mid-range shots. I don't want him taking too many of these. But if the defense is just going to completely collapse into the restricted area, which is what you saw in this game, he broke out a mid-range jumper. It's not that he just broke out the mid-range jumper. He had two of them, right? And a couple of other kind of runner shots. It was that he did it late in the fourth quarter. That was the most impressive thing to me. He realized what the defense was giving him and rose up and took that jump shot. We haven't seen him do that. To do that and break that out in a close game that's a must win, maybe when it's better just to attack the rim, might result in a turnover. You saw some of that from him in this game. He had four. But to break that out then in one of the most crucial moments of the season, whoo. That's some, that's some boldness, let's call it here, since we're a family show on Locked On Pelicans. That's an impressive thing to do right then and to have the confidence to do that says something about where he is with his game right now. And that's the type of thing that other NBA people are going to look at and go, oh, okay, this guy, good luck. When he plays like this, no one can stop him in the league. And if he adds a little bit of range, and again, try and get to the rim. That's where he's best, right? But if that's what the defense is going to give you, hit him with a couple of body blows like that. And he did in this game, and it was an incredibly impressive thing. It's why the Pelicans won. He just led them to a victory here in a way that this team truly needed. That's also not counting the assists. His passing was good in this one. Seven assists. Knowing when, and this will it's, this will get into what we're going to talk about in the next segment here, when to hit his cutting teammates, guys who were moving, which we haven't always seen from this team. Yeah, they were doing that in this game. There were adjustments. So while Zion led this team to victory here, he wasn't the only reason that they won. It wasn't all Zion Williamson. You saw good performances all around. Let's talk about the coaching adjustments that Willie Green and staff made that also let the Pelicans get this win. And why haven't we seen those sooner? That's coming up here next in today's episode of Lockdown Pelicans. Before that, though, we are doing a live in-person in person, if you're in New Orleans, Locked On Pelicans episode, Mid-City Yacht Club with the Pels 12 on April 15th. It's that Monday, the day after the season ends, 7 p.m. I will see you at Mid-City Yacht Club where we are going to be recording Locked On Pelicans Live. It's going to be a normal show. I have guests lined up. I'll let you know who they are soon. And then... We're going to do a live Q&A with me and the rest of the panel and everyone who's been on the show. It's going to be a lot of fun. Come hang out. We're going to stream it live online on YouTube as well. We've got the setup and everything. So we're going to kind of do it as a little bit of a get you set for whether it's the play-in tournament or the postseason series. Either way, we've got something we need to talk about how the Pelicans win. We're going to break it all down for you live in mid at Mid-City Yacht Club, 7 p.m. We'll have a flyer and everything for you soon with all of that. Save the date, mark your calendars, whatever you need to do. I will see you at Mid-City Yacht Club, 7 p.m. on Monday, April 15th, day after the season ends. So coming up next, adjustments from the Pelicans in this game because they were really good and I want to break those down for you. That's coming up here next. 
Right now, though, I'm really excited to tell you about Prize Picks because Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It's the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. You just pick more or less on the stat projection for two to four players or two or more players, and you watch the winnings roll in. So March is over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off in April, right? We've got the championship game. So be part of the action on Prize Picks for both the uh, for the men tournament here and right now you can get in on the playoff action and win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a whole new level during basketball's postseason so you can now win up to a hundred times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks you can turn ten dollars into a thousand dollars with basketball hockey college basketball entries today on prize picks and number america's number one fantasy sports app. So download the app today and use code LOCKEDONNBA for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, download the app today. You'll get a first deposit match up to $100 when you use promo code, all lowercase, LOCKEDONNBA. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with prize picks. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen today and every day. We are here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this Pelicans team. Please subscribe wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube as well. We almost have 10,000 Pelicans fans. Again, the number one Pelicans podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. So Willie Green was under a lot of heat after that San Antonio Spurs lost. The team looking very stagnant, just not looking great. He and the coaching staff were clearly cooking up some adjustments for this game because they looked like an entirely different team on offense. No more of the stagnation, other than one or two times, really. But I look, it's going to happen over the course of a game. This team came was just well prepared and ready to play, knowing what the Phoenix Suns were going to do. And we talked a little bit about it in the last segment. They were going to play drop coverage. Yusuf Nurkic backs off. They kind of keep the lane clogged so that Zion has nowhere to go, nowhere to drive. You shut him down. They probably then think they can get an easy win. But no, they did not. They made some big-time adjustments to the game plan. And it started with the way they used some of their off-ball guys. So if Zion, if they're going to build a wall for Zion, let's put those other guys in actions and move them around and find ways to make them threats. You haven't seen, you didn't really see this a ton from the Pelicans during that homestand. Here, though, they really went out of their way to make guys like Larry Nance Jr., Jose Alvarado, Dyson Daniels, and we'll talk more about them in the next segment as we look at some of the other big performances here because I thought they all looked good and getting Jose Alvarado back was a really good thing. So they made the right adjustments, and that's what you loved to see. It was Larry Nance Jr. screening for Zion Williamson, who had the ball going into dribble handoff actions, things like that, that got Zion going downhill, but then saw Larry kind of flare out to the side and then cut back in or go set a screen for someone else to cut so that when Zion drove and they tried to meet him, there was a backdoor cutter. They had a lot of guys do flash cuts, slot cuts. Flash cut is where you just kind of cut up to the free throw line after Zion's attacked or when he's about to attack and you put another body there for a screen. Slot cut is when they kind of hit the, hit the lane and cut down the middle when there's a pick and roll on the side and you saw Zion get the ball particularly on the right side so that he can get moving to his left in screen and roll actions. This was a really good move by this coaching staff, and it also makes it a little bit frustrating that we didn't see this all the time from New Orleans, but at least they broke it out in a must-win game. Better late than never, I guess. But that got these guys going and playing quickly and attacking the Phoenix Suns and keeping them off balance. It's also why Yusuf Nurkic in this one was in a lot of foul trouble, right? He had five points. He was rendered largely ineffective in this game after where he kind of played really well for them. And when the Pelicans started to get in the flow of this, the turnovers went down. They had a lot of turnovers in the first quarter, but the second and third, they were really good about it. And particularly in the fourth, where they only had one. They were kind of in sync, going through those practices, Willie Green drilling into things. They clearly were listening. I saw some people saying, oh, they're not listening to Willie Green. They've tuned out. No, that, that ain't the case at all. You could clearly see that in this game, but you could see it from the practices that they were going through too. They knew they had a winning game plan for this one, and they came out and executed it. And just adding more ball movement in, I think, was a really great thing. Again, it's not, or it's, it's not revolutionary, right? Move the ball. If they're going to sag off, hang back, keep moving the ball around until you find an open shot. And that ties into three-point shooting. There was more of that here. They took almost 43s, 39 of them. 
And they made, oh, sorry, they took 39 threes is what it was, and they made 16 of them. It's 41%. The starting lineup had tw- a ton of threes taken, right? Trey took 10. CJ took 12. Off the bench, Dyson took three. Jose took eight. Larry Nance Jr. made two, or took two, right? Even Herb took two. Jonas took two. Jonas didn't play, and that was the right move here. Four minutes, and then Larry came in and looked fantastic in those other minutes. So they added more shooting. They made those shots, and it allowed them to keep up when guys like Grayson Allen Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal was seven for eight, right? You've got to take some threes to keep up with that. You have to. Yeah, maybe it means you're winning, you're you're like winning and losing by the three, living and dying by the three, but that's how the modern NBA is. Like you just have to accept that fact. Taking more threes and building that into the game plan with ball movement was a really important thing. But also it was a way that they attacked what the Phoenix Suns were doing with their defensive coverages. So when CJ McCollum had the ball and Zion would set a screen for him or they would do a dribble handoff situation, you know, you had Yusuf Nurkic then just dropping back, just conceding space essentially to try and take away Zion Williamson, but conceding then space to CJ McCollum who just launched threes. You know, a lot of people don't like his shot selection, and I think there's a few things he can cut out. Some of those runners and floaters don't work, but those are killer down the stretch. Sometimes it's as simple as make or miss league with it, right? And what we like and what we don't. And we're kind of reactionary to that. But some of those early shots off of he's got some space, he should shoot. He should shoot. I don't care if you don't like it. It, it. It's an effective thing, and the Pelicans need more threes, and I'm fine with CJ taking him. It's not hero ball. It's part of the game plan, and they all know this. CJ McCollum on the season is shooting 41.1%. That is an incredibly good number. And in this game, he went 7 for 12. He was actually the leading scorer for New Orleans. He had the highest individual plus minus in this game. He was 7 for 12, 58.3%. Four rebounds, five assists, just three turnovers. He was really good. He knew when to shoot. Sometimes just ripping that shot early is exactly how you do it. A lot of people don't like when he takes some of those threes in transition either. Those are called pujits, by the way, pull-up jumper in transition. Those are back-breaking shots, but they also do something else that you probably don't realize. If you're someone who's like, why is he doing that? No, take those shots. When guys are getting back on defense, right, you're going to have, and CJ has the ball and say they're in kind of a fast break situation. Zion's running. He's not running as fast as CJ, a little bit slower there, and that's okay. But what they're going to try and do is take away that lane so that you can't hit Zion as he's just cutting down the middle or Herb Jones as he's cutting down the middle for the easy layup. So you take those threes. So CJ gets to the three-point line. There's two defenders in the paint. Launch the three. It's wide open. Take it. You don't need to work it around for a shot. Just go out and shoot and score. That's the important thing because then next time you're running down in transition, those two defenders in the paint, one or two is going to try and close out on CJ then, and then you've got that pass later. So it opens things up later. And when he was taking those threes early on in the shot clock wide open because they were playing drop coverage against this team, he was allowed to shoot and then it pulled those guys out. Notice how much better the spacing in this game was overall for New Orleans compared to some of the games on the homestand. Zion had room to operate and didn't need to go through two, three guys. And then again, he had the the wherewithal to know, I'm going to shoot that little mid-ranger. Man, the, <laughs> the confidence to shoot that in the fashion that he did was truly an incredible thing to me. But it was there in some of those shots that he had at the rim were there because of what CJ was doing on the perimeter and Jose Alvarado and Dyson Daniels and some of these other guys. And Larry Nance Jr. just setting great screens doing Larry Nance Jr. things. That was one of the best versions of him that we haven't seen in a minute. And I was thrilled they we got that from him in this game. He was a plus 17, by the way, off the bench. Jonas, well, we'll talk about, let's talk about that coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Again, if you didn't hear it, live, in-person recording that's going to be streamed online then posted everywhere. Episode of Locked On Pelicans Mid-City Yacht Club, Monday the 15th, either previewing the play-in tournament game that should be on Tuesday for New Orleans if that's the case, or the playoff series that they're going to be in as well. So we got a day off, no games on the 15th. I will see you in person. We're going to have some stuff made up for it and everything. I can't wait. 
Um, it's going to be so much fun. I am so excited here. Live recording. We're going to have special guests. There's going to be raffle prizes. It's completely in conjunction with the Pels 12 here. Rel is going to be one of the guests on the show. We got some more. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing you in person at Mid City Yacht Club, 7 p.m. Central on April 15th. Coming up next, other good performances here from the night. How that help, How they helped get this win and why they needed Jose Alvarado back. That's coming up here next in today's episode of Locked On Pelicans. Right now, though, I'm excited to tell you about LinkedIn because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality qualified professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs is the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. You can't have open positions. It's taxing the rest of your guys, the rest of the people on your team. You want the right person in the role. It might be costing you money. Don't worry. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn has a vast network of more than a billion professionals, which makes it the best place to hire. And it gives you access to professionals you can't find anywhere else. LinkedIn does all of that while making the process easy and intuitive. So hiring is easy when you have that many quality candidates. So easy, in fact, that 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and they might not have the time or resources to hire. So they're going to make that process easier. And 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MBA. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MBA to post your job for free terms and conditions apply. And thank you for making Locked On Pelicans your first listen. Today and every day, we're here Monday through Friday, the number one Pelicans podcast covering everything you want to know about this team. Come watch a live in-person episode of Locked On Pelicans at Mid-City Yacht Club, Monday, April 15th, day after the season ends against the Los Angeles Lakers. We're going to preview the postseason because as I said the other day, season might be a bit of a dis disappointment. But it wasn't over, and there's still things to play for, even if it's the playing tournament. So we'll preview that or preview the playoff series. Have some great guests lined up. Can't wait. I will see you there. Going to have the flyer on social media and everything. I literally just got it while I'm recording this. Going to be there with the Pels 12, the best support group you could have, the best fans in the world with all of that. It's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be raffle prizes, other things. Maybe I'll even buy a drink. Who knows? That's going to be Monday, April 5th. So let's keep talking about the Pelicans' victory over the Phoenix Suns. Puts them into a tie, by the way, with the Phoenix Suns in the Western Conference standings. So they're technically tied for six, but Phoenix gets it because they unfortunately have the tiebreaker over the New Orleans Pelicans. But look, beating them was still an important thing for the standings here. 113-105 victory. CJ was great in that game, I thought. Again, attacking the defense in the right way. Opening things up for Zion Williamson, who just flat out looked dominant in this game in a way that we have never really seen from him before. His guess, best game ever, ever. I think it, it's without saying how good he was. Let me know what you think, by the way, in the comments down below. The best part of Zion's game in this one was, was it the mid-range jumpers? Was it the way he attacked the basket? Was it the defense in the five blocks? Was it just simply that block on Kevin Durant that was very, very ridiculous? It was all fun. And we're going to keep covering it, by the way, here on Lockdown Pelicans, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Become an everyday or listen Monday through Friday to Lockdown Pelicans. So some other really good performances. They needed Jose Alvarado back, didn't they? He came in off the bench, goes five of eight from three. That's what you need to see from him. Getting under some of these guys' skins like Devin Booker and just adding a healthy dose of energy that this team was missing. He's got this straight up like F you attitude, right? And sometimes the team feeds off of that and they've been lacking that it seemed like the past couple of games. Jose Alvarado just simply being back out there on the court kind of gave them that attitude back and you saw it from them. But the fact that he was shooting well was huge. They were going under on screens, right? When it came to him, when he had the ball, they were playing drop coverage against him. And we, in the last podcast, had talked about the need for more three-point shooting. Well, he provided it with eight attempts off the bench. Najee was out hurt, and we hope he comes back soon because he's been really good this year, but he was tentative to shoot. 
the other game in the loss to the San Antonio Spurs. To have Jose Alvarado come back in and be fearless and give you 15 points off the bench. By the way, New Orleans won the bench points in this one 34 to 7 because of performances like that was absolutely needed for this team. Just the attitude that he had. The way he can run that offense a little bit too. They need, they've they needed a backup point guard to run out there when one of their big two guys in Zion or B.I. is off the court. Put B.I. with Jose and you're good. Put Zion with Jose and you're good or another backup point guard. Jose being back is really important for this team, just being kind of pesky and everything. And that's what you love to see. It was a great comeback game for him in this one. Larry Nance Jr. was also outstanding, I thought, in this. It doesn't really show up in the way that you would think. Nine points, seven rebounds, eight assists. Like, that by itself is pretty good. It's like in triple-double territory, low triple-double with the points, but still triple-double nonetheless. And they needed to get some quality production from the center position. But by using him in actions, right, hitting him on pick-and-roll kind of motions and then having him pass the ball to whoever was flash-cutting to that kind of free-throw line, and that high post area was great. Having him cut over there too was really good and gave him a little bit of room to work. The seven assists, letting him operate and seeing other guys move around and making the right read, the right pass was perfect. They need that kind of performance from him. That's how you can use him. One game or a couple games after the center was a liability against the Phoenix Suns. It wasn't in this game because they came in with the right game plan. That type of performance from him from this team is what makes you a little bit optimistic that Willie Green and the coaching staff with time to prepare, and they had a little bit of time for this one, can come up with the right game plan and potentially win a playoff series because of it. That, I think, is truly a great way to to go about it and to try and win. And they found the right balance with this. You also had... Overall, a very good game, I thought, from Dyson Daniels. He wasn't as hesitant as we had seen him in the past. In that Boston game, he looked ter- He was. It's not that he looked. He was terrified to shoot. This game, he was not. In the past couple of games, he's just decided he's going to shoot. And I like that from him. When he's under the basket, he needs to go up a little bit more forceful with it than he does. So those kind of, they're almost, they're not lazy, but he kind of like lofts up this little baby hook, something like that. Go go up with authority, fella, and, and just throw it down. That's the way to do it. But he was at least taking three pointers, not scared, not passing out of shots. And his size is very good, can give you rebounds. Six on the night from this one. Those are the type of performances you're going to need from him to be able to get these wins. And then Trey Murray, Murphy in the three-point shooting. Look, they need that. Just launch, just bomb away. Just bomb away. Don't care. Don't care if you're making them. The fact that it's a threat and that they are keeping guys close to him, I think, is really, really big and important. They knew what they were doing in this game. They came out and executed. And we're not even going to mention that Jordan Hawkins didn't get any minutes because they got the victory. And that's all you've got to do at this point, however you get it done. But this team had a really good game plan coming into it. I thought that you got the best performance ever from Zion Williamson. Pelicans back in the thick of the playoff race when they looked kind of left for dead just a couple of days ago. Not the case. We're going to see how the season's going to end. There's going to be a lot to play for. And they got a very winnable game coming up on Tuesday against the Portland Trailblazers. We'll talk about that game. The other ones coming up. The other big stories around the team here on Locked On Pelicans. April 15th, 7 p.m. Mid-City Yacht Club in New Orleans. Live in-person show. And then live Q&A after. I can't wait. It's going to be a lot of fun. I will see y'all then. And that's going to do it for this episode of Locked On Pelicans. I'm excited for this week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Can't wait. Fun end of the season, meaningful basketball games. As always, I'm your host, Jake Madison, at Nola Jake on Twitter, and I'll be back with y'all tomorrow.